Today it is all about engaging encounters, but today it's about environmental hazards, how we use them to make an a, a encounter interesting. And remember, an encounter just isn't combat. An encounter can be social, an encounter can be combat, an encounter can be a thing the party needs to solve. Bottom line is, the environmental hazards can be used to enhance that. However, we need to talk about the five pitfalls of using environmental encounters and the five benefits of using high, high environmental encounters, or about five. Let's get right on into it today. The biggest pitfall of overwhelming, well, environmental challenges is that when the environmental hazard is so complex, it starts to dominate the encounter. It doesn't matter if we're talking about combat, if we're talking about social, if the environmental challenge is the encounter, then it is the encounter. And that's not what we want. We want environmental challenges to be enhancing the encounter, to drive the pacing, or to make things more intense. So keep that in mind. Don't make them overly complex. Another pitfall when it comes to environmental hazards, if the players don't know what they're walking into and then get hit by the environmental hazard, they're like, well, how was I supposed to know that was happening? Remember, complexity is one thing, and overly complex, we've already talked about that in part number one, but clarity, basically telegraphing, allowing people to understand the environmental hazard that they're dealing with. That's also super important. Do not lack that clarity. Don't just throw an environmental hazard at them one time and expect the players to understand it without enunciating it. And remember, their characters may know what they're walking into. It may be an environmental hazard that this world knows about that is commonplace. So keep that in mind. The other thing that you want to avoid when it comes to environmental hazards and encounters um, that is kind of a pitfall is the unbalanced challenge. Now, I talked about over complexity. The unbalanced challenge means that that's the thing that's killing them. When the environmental hazard is the thing that's killing them and not the encounter or dealing them with that, that becomes the encounter. And while in the first video or the first section, I talked about overwhelming complexity, overwhelming challenge means that, yeah, it's so complex. That's where my focus is at. This is I keep getting killed by or knocked back or stopping my progress from this environmental challenge. It's not adding to the pace. It's not adding to the environment. It's literally taking my focus away from the encounter. We want to avoid that as well. So both complexity and challenge fall kind of in the same boat. Overly complex means it's all I can think about. Overwhelmingly challenging means that it keeps killing me. So food for thought there. The other pitfall when using environmental hazards and encounters is predictability. Now, I just got done saying over complexity and overly challenging, that, but predictable. What I mean by that is a, a complete repeating pattern that happens multiple times in the campaign. All of a sudden you're fighting in the wind and I can't shoot straight because the wind's blowing. And every time that our ranger decides to shoot, there's a gust of wind. That just becomes the biggest problem because now the overwhelming challenge is the predictability of wind, which means my ranger can never fire. So now he's just frustrated. Predictability is also repetitiveness. It, it's repetitive nature of the encounter. And we want to avoid that. We want to avoid that continuously repeating the same environmental hazard over and over and over again, therefore becoming predictable. The other pitfall when it comes to environmental hazards is ignoring player, player creativity. This is a big one. We set up an environmental hazard on an encounter. It could be combat. It could be social. It could be the encounter itself. And the players think creatively negating the hazard altogether. That should be rewarded. In fact, if we have two opposing sides, that player, that group should be rewarded for negating that hazard and the bad guys take the brunt of it. It ends up becoming their advantage. Reward that. That can be so rewarding for the players. Yes, you may have developed an amazing encounter and the players and thwart the entire environmental hazard. That will be something they remember. Do you remember that time when we completely turned the weather against the bad guys and used the sandstorm to our advantage? That's what they talk about. That's what players want. They want their creativity to be rewarded. So remember, do that. Don't ignore their creativity, even if it negates the hazard that you spent so much time working on. Remember, all that time you spent developing that environmental hazard just helped the party win because they used it creatively. Embrace that. Something you should do or a must when using environmental hazards as a, as a game mechanic in any kind of encounter is increase the danger, increase the complexity by introducing something minor in the beginning, minor lightning strikes here and there, and then increasing its danger. What you're doing is you're like, okay, here's the environmental hazard. Now it's going to start beating on you. Okay. And it allows the players to be creative, but also telegraphs what they're walking into. 
absolutely make sure that you use a gradual scale so that way the players can understand what they're walking into. An absolute must when using environmental hazards. Another must when it comes to using environmental hazards as encounters is you absolutely must clearly communicate the hazard. The characters if they understand it, if they make their arcana check, their lore check, their survival check, their religion check, whatever check they needed, if they don't make it, sure, if that's part of it, if it's not overwhelmingly destructive, that's fine. But make sure that you clearly communicate the hazard. An unknown hazard just becomes frustrating, nonstop frustration for players. So clearly communicate what the hazard is or at least what it's doing and possibly give them some suggestions. Another must when dealing with environmental hazards is balancing the difficulty. Earlier on, I said one of the pitfalls is making it overly challenging, but also there's something where it's an environmental challenge where there's no danger at all. There's a balancing effect here. Now, here's the thing, is that if I have a level party 10, I have a level one party, and I put the same encounter on them, and I put the same environmental hazard, doesn't necessarily mean that environmental hazard will kill the level one or kill the level 10 or not kill either. It just changes the dynamics of the encounter. An environmental hazard, when done best, changes how the mechanics of that fight function, changes how the characters and players would approach that combat, that social interaction. It does not necessarily equate to direct death. Lava flows? Absolutely. Hurricanes? Could be. But I can also make them more or less dangerous depending on what I want or telegraphing it as such. Another must when dealing with environmental, ha environmental hazards and encounters is keeping it fresh. What do I mean by that? Don't do the same thing over and over and over again unless it's part of the campaign. The constant hurricane will set the scales, will set the tail, will set the scene of what's happening. However, it gets old after a while. If every single battle and every single encounter is outside in the hurricane, your range guys are going to get frustrated. And if you're not going to tell people, hey, by the way, range is going to be difficult in this campaign because of X, Y, and Z, that can be super, super frustrating. So make sure you keep the environmental hazards fresh or at least not always be pressuring them with the same thing. And finally, when it comes to environmental hazards in encounters, encourage player interaction. Encourage player creativity. Encourage your players to interact with the hazard themselves. If just avoiding it altogether is part of the game, then that's what they may do. So if you can encourage them a way to use the encounter, it will help you create that much better encounters. So keep that in mind. And again, always, thank you guys so much for joining us. And if you stick around until past this, you'll actually see, as of normal, the stuff we have coming out with Hero Soul and the Fire Incursions book. And as always, we're going to see you when we will see you next time.